Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Today what I'm talking about is how do you choose a horse to buy? out there on all these different websites and you may be like well how would I choose one I've decided to buy a horse how do I choose one and you may be like well I need to start with a budget no that is not where you need to start out because if you've never bought a horse before you don't know what they cost so start by thinking about what do I want a horse for do you want a horse just to trail ride? Do you want a horse to just ride in the backyard? Do you want a horse that you can start competing on? Do you want a horse to do a specific, very competitive event? Do you want to go to the Olympics, you know? Um, or do you want a horse that kind of can do, do it all? Like that can show, maybe on the low level, like, you know, you're not gonna go full on professional. You know, you want a horse that can show, be safe to ride in the pasture, um, go trail riding, because those are the horses say that I have. So if you're looking at horses that I sell, I sell horses that are like your great family horse, but that can compete on a high level as well. Um, they're not necessarily always beginner horses, like, because to me, if you've never ridden a horse before, you need a horse that will barely walk. So, um, so that's something else to keep in mind. So like, what is your level that you ride at? If you have never ridden a horse before, I wouldn't go buy a horse that could compete and jump and do all of your solids and all kinds of cool, cool things. You need a horse that would just walk. So if you've never ridden a horse before, I definitely recommend maybe going to get some lessons first and not going to a riding stable. I mean, that's fun to see if you like riding. But like, that's not real <laughs> because you ride a horse and they just ride on this like same road all the time and they just follow right behind each other and they just walk. A horse that you bring home will not necessarily do that because it's not like a, just a dirt road that they've done 25,000 times. So um, I would definitely recommend getting just a few lessons. You don't have to get a bunch. A few lessons just to make sure you know how to start, stop a horse, all those kind of things and just see how well. If you have ridden a horse multiple times and you feel comfortable, you know, you know a friend, you've rode a horse at their house, um, and you feel comfortable that you could start and stop a horse, um, like, and if you need to get harder on the horse, you know, depending on the situation, um, then you'd be ready to purchase one. So something to think about then is your level. Like, are you scared the horse will run off? Then you definitely want to get, there's two types of horses. You've got your lazy horses and you've got your hotter horses. Your lazy horses are great for super beginners, people who don't want to go fast, people who just want to lay back and just like barely trail ride, you know, those are great for those things. Or also known as a push ride. Um, that means you have to really push them to get them to go. And second one is the hot horses. So if you're really wanting to compete at a higher level, or even if you just want to compete like at all, or if you like to go faster, um, in general, then a hot horse may be for you. Like I personally, since I ride a lot more, I like a hotter horse now because then if I want them to go to a trot, I just kind of have to think trot and then they go. If it's a lazy horse, I have to be like trot, 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 you know? And so like that gets a little bit uh, difficult sometimes to ride when they are like that. But you can make them hotter or you can make them lazier by the way that you ride. So you don't take that and be like, this is how the horse is. No, but each horse has a more propensity to be one way or the other. Um, and a lot of times it has to do with their breed. So like draft breeds, some quarter horses, um, some uh, like, like pony breeds, some of them. Um, so any of those kind of horses are gonna be more of the like super laid back, like don't want to go fast at all. Um, and then you have the hotter horses like thoroughbreds, Arabians, um, some types of corn horses are really hot um, and they're just like always ready to go, always ready to go, but not necessarily. Like I have a thoroughbred outside right now and he is actually a push ride. So don't think has to be that breed, has to be that type. That is not the situation. So don't get yourself in that scenario. Honestly, kind of be believe what the ad says about the horse um, and then just go try it out for yourself you know and you got to believe a little bit <laughs> to get started but go look at the horse yourself um second okay so now once you decided what breed you want but again don't stick to i can only get that kind of horse so once you've kind of decided well mainly though you need to decide do you let's just okay we got about three types well yeah three types of horses you got to look at you've got gated horses Okay, you got non-gated horses, and then you have like draft horses. So you kind of got to decide which category you want to be in, and then open your mind to those. Because again, the breed doesn't need to be your end-all be-all, because you have other things that's more important. 
Okay, so decide what do you want the horse to be used for? Which category of horse do you want? Gated, non-gated, or draft? Then start looking at your ads. Start looking at equine.com. Um, you can look at equinenow.com. You can look at Craigslist. Craigslist is actually a great option. I actually like selling on Craigslist the best because I don't want to pay anything and I can put pictures on there. Whereas on the other ones, you have to pay to put a horse for sale. And then it's like, instead they could, I could just put a text ad on like equine now and then you could just contact me and then I give you my pictures. So something to keep in mind, don't look that just they don't have pictures. It's just cause they don't want to have to pay for it cause it is kind of expensive um, over time. Especially depending on your cost of your horse. If you have a $40,000 horse, I mean, what's $40, you know? Um, so that's something to think about and start looking at ads. Um, once, now let's try to look about how to choose the horse. So again, the ability, or the level, like if you're wanting to compete, do they have the ability or potential? Um, do they have, next thing you wanna look at as far as how to choose it is their personality. Now that's something you probably have to tell once you arrive to look at one. Um, but you know, you if are you wanting a horse that will come live in the house with you, you know, the one that you can love on, or is that not important to you? Um, if they're very hateful when they get picked out of the, the field. I mean, is that going to bother you? Are they safe around kids? Like, are they okay with kids and dogs and everything else running around them? Or do they get antsy and don't like that? So just think about what their personality is like. Um, next, um, like that's whenever you kind of look at, so that's, so we're at number four, I guess at this point. Yeah. The level of horse. Okay. And then the fifth thing, so, that was all. so first thing is what are you going to do with the horse? Second, most important thing when you're choosing a horse is their personality, in my opinion. Third thing most important is the ability or potential of the horse. Fourth thing of the, is the level of the horse and how you ride. Like, are they at the level you want? Not the level you want to be. Now, I have had some issues when I've sold some horses is that they were at the level the person wanted to ride at, but they really actually weren't able to ride at. So you gotta think you're buying a horse for right now that you could maybe move up to, but don't buy a horse for later because you won't ever ride the horse. <laughs> so, so be aware of that. Okay. Um, but like you can, like if you're a capable rider, you could still get a horse with higher potential and ability um, and just bring them down a little bit. But don't get a horse that like is a 1D barrel horse and you've only ever walked a horse. You know, that's just not gonna be a good match. Okay. The fifth thing that's important when you're looking at choosing a horse that you want to buy is their specs. This is where everybody gets so hung up on is their age, their height, their breed. That would be kind of your next thing. Um, don't be so be like, oh, it's a 20 year old horse. I can't get it. Um, I have a 28 year old horse right now that I can still ride as much as I want. Um, so remember horses live to be 30, 35. So it's not the same age as dogs. A lot of people think about, well, dogs only live to like 11. Horses are living to like 30, 35. Um, so, and they're usable easily into the late twenties, if not early thirties. It just depends on how well you take care of them, you know? So, but they are, but you think you may need a two year old. Most people don't need to ride a two year old. Most people need to ride like, older than six. <laughs> so just keep that in mind um, when you're looking at horses that younger is not necessarily always better for you. So sixth thing that's important for how to choose your horse you're going to go look at or purchase is their confirmation. Now what that is is how well does like their leg stand to their body, um, how well are they muscled across their body, but again, musculature can change, but how straight are their legs? Um, is their neck as proportionate to their back? Again, this is not like an end all be all. You could have the worst confirmation ever and be a Grand Prix jumper. Okay, so don't take that so hard, but that is something when you're looking at horses that does need to be considered. Um, Cause a lot of times the confirmation will determine how well like they they work into their twenties. Like if you have a really bad confirmational horse, they will not probably stay sound um, all the way through their twenties, um, and you know, late into the thirties, if they're not pretty confirmational sound. And, and a lot of that does have to do with breeding. 
So if you do have a registered horse, that's why I'm actually, again, a big fan of non-registered horses. Ones that are just a mixture kind of everything because they actually usually can stay so sound and like, you know, they'll outlive us all, you know, because they actually do so well. But a lot of times when you have um, really registered stock that are so good and you look at all their background, a lot of times they've had some inbreeding in there to make sure you get the performance you want. But a lot of times they'll have medical issues. So it's something to keep in mind when you look confirmationally and at their breeding. Seventh thing to consider is of course their color. Now that is not something that you like is uh, end all be all again, but like whenever you're looking at your dream horse to keep color is something that you would like. I mean, does everyone want a brown horse? No. Um, but does everyone want a gray horse? No. Um, but you can look, be looking into that, but like you got to fall in love kind of with this horse if you're going to enjoy it. And um, I am a sucker for paints. I'm a sucker for grays. Um, I absolutely love them. Are they hard to keep clean? Yes. But I just absolutely love them. They're just so beautiful. Also love like a black or a bay. Um, I don't know, just there's just so many good ones out there. So like, I'd like to have it. It's like, if you ever seen that meme is horses are like shoes, you need one in every color. I totally agree. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind when you're looking for a horse, but it's so far down the list. Like so many other things are important before you get to color. So if you're like, I'm looking for a three-year-old gray horse, you're really narrowing down your pool of options. So narrow down first on what you want to do with it before you start narrowing it down. Then the eighth thing important um, is, uh, and the last thing to think about whenever you're choosing your horse is don't go out and don't, I would say if you can try not to buy sight unseen, especially if you've never bought a horse before, go out to the farm and try them out. Um, and I'll also do a video on how to try out a horse and stuff like that, but you want to go try them out. Um, and then once you have looked at the horse and they always say, you know, go check out a couple other horses. I don't necessarily believe in that. Like if you love the horse and it's everything you wanted it to be in a horse, purchase it. But I do say, think about it overnight just to give yourself overnight and then call them back the next day and offer them something. However, if you do offer them something right then and there, they probably will take less. So that's something just to keep in mind that if you wait and call the next day, they're probably going to keep it at their full price or something a little bit less. Okay, but if you wanted to offer, hey, I'll give it to you right now. Um, and if you honestly, like my thought is, when you go out to look at a horse, you don't go out to look at a horse until you're 95% sure you're gonna buy it. At least that's the way it should be. That's how I do things, is if I'm gonna go look at a horse, um, I've already checked off all my list. And if it checks off on all of it, then I am just making sure that it is what they say. That's where you have to say, are they knocking off all the lists that I want to have? And if it says so on the ad, or if I have called them, because a lot of times the ad don't put everything in the ad. So call them, talk to them, you know, and if it hits all your marks, um, then great. Then go check it out. Now, if there's some things that are not right where you want, and you don't know if they're deal breakers or not, again, seeing the horse in person sometimes help that. But if your deal breaker is my horse has to be, you know, 17 hands tall, um, and you're looking at a 15 hand horse, you won't necessarily be happy with that. Um, but also don't think you need a 17 hand horse. I'm 5'11 and my main horse is 15 hands. So, um, as long as it's horse size, which is 14, three or above, it will easily carry you. They're like a thousand to 1200 pounds. So, um, if you're wanting to jump those six foot tall, uh, a 14 three hand horse is going to struggle <laughs> to do that. But also most horses end up struggling and having lameness issues. But that's a separate issue anyways. But, um, so definitely, uh, I, like, yeah. So pick you out a couple like on Craigslist or whatever, or equine or whatever. Um, check them out, call them if you have questions about it. Um, and then they're going to try to get you to set up a time to come look at them. Um, or they could always just ask you for money, but I, I wouldn't go with those people. Um, so then, yeah. And then just come out and check them, ride them and see if that's what you want. Now you don't have to ride them. You can just like purchase them after seeing the person ride, but I would definitely recommend trying to ride them. Um, at least just with a walk. You don't have to go canter. If you haven't cantered in a long time, just get out there and walk. Make sure you're able to stop and walk. So you're not scared to get on the horse when you get home. Um, but I, uh, and I'm also going to do with a video on after you've picked out your horse, how do you go about buying it? I'm also then going to do a video about after you buy a horse, what do you do? <laughs> so that's going to be my next two videos in this series. So this is going to be a buying a horse series. This is a buying a horse series. Number one is how do you choose a horse to purchase? 
Um, and so once you've got them all ticked off, if you're 95% sure you want to buy it, go on out and check it out. So thank you so much for watching my video. And again, oh, one last thing. Price is not going to need to be a end all be all because remember almost all people will haggle so i know that i personally haggle as well so um, they have the list price offer them something less and then they'll probably come somewhere in the middle so don't think that they are firm unless they say a firm price so and you can always ask them on the phone and um, they probably won't tell you their true like lowest dollar so it's all about cash in hand has a lot more to do with it if you have three thousand dollars in cash you can end up getting a $10,000 horse for $3,000 just if you have it in the cash and if they need to sell. So something to keep in mind, some food for thought. So thank you so much for watching. God bless. Be adventurous. Make sure you hit like and subscribe so you don't miss anything on my next videos. Talk to you later. Bye.